Okay, so in this uh, video demonstration, I'm going to show you how to create a good wireframe render to composite on top of your ambient occlusion render. Now, uh, I will not be showing you guys how to do the uh, the Arnold render okay, for the ambient occlusion. This one you all uh, should already know. So what I'm going to show you is how do you set up your wireframe. Okay, now we know that if you use mental ray or Arnold to render, you get a very high density wireframe that you might not need because when you, whenever you subdivide it, it's going to add extra dense uh, wireframes onto your model. Like for example, if I press level one, okay, for this particular model, this is the actual number of polygons that you actually use to render. So there are a number of things that we need to set up first before Okay, right now what I'm doing is I'm just pressing 3, I'm selecting the objects, pressing 3 to subdivide it so everything looks nice, smooth and rounded. Okay, so to do that, first make sure you save your work first, the finalized version. So I'm going to save this version. Okay, so this will be the lockdown camera position. Okay, if you are happy with this camera position, please lock the camera so you will not accidentally move it. And this will be rendered at 1920 by 1080 which is Full HD. Now let's set up the wireframe settings. Now what we want to do is that we want to isolate these wireframes. Okay, so before we do that, let me just change the shading a little bit. Okay, and let me disable the wireframe on shaded. Now when you render this, you should get a rendered version of this ambient occlusion. Okay, but it will not have any wireframes on this. Okay, so now we need to render the wireframes. Okay, so let me save another new version of the file. I'm going to save this as, I just put an underscore next to it, call it wireframes, and then save. All right. So next, we're going to set it up in such a way that uh, we will be able to see all the wireframes. Now, the first thing is I want to combine all of this together as a single object. So it makes selection a little bit easier for me. Okay, remember, we only want, we only want to use these, uh, these files as our renderer, or rather, to render the wireframe. So go and drag and select all the entire uh, mesh. You can combine them. So you just click on Mesh Combine. Okay, so this just makes it easier for me to select all of them at once, and so that I can apply a surface material. So right mouse click and assign a new material. I'm going to assign a surface shader to it. Okay, now when you assign a surface shader to it, and including, I also selected the ground, and I have assigned a surface shader to the ground. Everything is going to turn completely black. All right? So in this case, the ground is covering the entire background, so uh, we don't even need to change the uh, background color. All right? Uh, the, uh, what is the uh, changing to the background to the black again, what is the shortcut? Oh, oh, B. Oh, B, okay. So if you are able to see the background in the back, okay, in the camera view, you just press Alt B several times until you cycle to the black background. Okay, let me just show you what I mean. Okay, if you press Alt B, okay, if you press Alt B, you will cycle between the different type of back, uh, background colors. So when you press Alt B, your background now will change to black. Okay, so this is what you want to do. You want to set everything to black. Now let's go back to the camera view again. Now, you can see, if I select the object, okay, we can see the wireframe very, very clearly. Now, but if I don't select the object, okay, and I turn off the wireframe on shaded, okay, let me just, right now, we are at Arnold Renderer. Okay, we need to change this into our viewport to renderer. Okay, so when I deselect it, you notice that the wireframe has changed into this unselected blue color. Now, obviously, this type of wireframe won't do. We need the color to be white. So we need to change the wireframes of this default color to white. So where do you change the colors? You go to Windows, okay, and then you go to, uh, let's see, where is this? Settings and Preferences, and then Color Settings. Okay, go to the tab that says Inactive, all right, over here. Click on Inactive. Go to objects, oh sorry, go to modeling. Uh, sorry, my mistake, it should be objects. Okay, go to objects and under polygon surfaces, 
Then you go to Objects, Polygon Surfaces. Then click and drag the slider until it turns white. Now you will notice that your wireframe has turned into this brilliant white color when you do not select it. For example, if you don't select anything, it will turn completely white. Now this is the kind of wireframe that we want. However, there is a slight issue here. If you can zoom in closely at the wireframe, you notice that they are very jagged. Okay, it doesn't look very nice. So now we need to use the power of our graphics card here to anti-alias or multi-sample it so that it becomes smoother. So to do that, okay, if you want to view it in the viewport here, go to Renderer, Viewport 2, click on the box, option box. Then scroll down until you'll see an anti-aliasing anti -aliasing box here. Enable smooth wireframe. Go ahead and enable multi-sampling. Now, because we have a very powerful graphics card here, you can boost the multi-sampling all the way to 16 levels. Okay, but uh, I, you have to be very careful with this. If your, if your model is very heavy, uh, and if you enable this, it might crash the computer. Okay, but I don't think it will crash this computer because these computers are having a very powerful graphics card. So go ahead and push it all the way to 16 and close. Now, if you look at the lines now, the, the quality of the lines have improved tremendously. Yes, smoothed out considerably. And then we can do a test render. Now, of course, if you render, your render settings will still be rendering at Arnold settings. So we need to go to the render settings and change the render settings. Now, of course, the common settings, you want to make sure that it's rendering at full HD and the camera of your choice. But we are not going to render using Arnold Renderer. We are going to change the renderer to Maya Hardware 2.0. Okay? So go to the Maya Hardware 2.0 tab. Scroll down to anti-aliasing. Make sure that it is the same as the previous settings that you set. Then go and click on this render options. Okay, once you set the anti-aliasing or check the anti-aliasing, go to the render options, scroll down until you see the render mode. Make sure that you are rendering on wire on shaded. Okay, by default it's on, it's on shaded, but make sure you turn on wire on shaded. Okay, so once you are done, you can do a test render and see the result. So you click on it, and boom, you're done. That's it. It's less than a second, in fact. It's just a split second. So the rendering is done. So you can look at the quality of the wireframe. It's, it's very good. Okay, and it's good enough for me to composite this on your uh, ambient occlusion version. All right, so to save this file, just go ahead and save it. Save the image. Okay, I'm going to save it as a PNG. I'm going to call it uh, Terrell wireframe okay so now I'm gonna save this file save the scene now remember this scene right is modified just for rendering the wireframe so if I want to render the I want to render the uh, ambient occlusion I'm gonna open up the ambient occlusion file again okay and since the ambient occlusion file is set to Arnold renderer then I'm going to render this using Arnold. Okay, so now it's rendering the ambient occlusion version. Okay, I'm going to wait for this to finish. And naturally, you can see whatever that takes more processing power, right, will take a, a little bit longer to render. Okay, so now we have this image. Okay, we can save this image. Save image. Call it Terrell Shaded. Save as PNG again. Then now we can fire up our Photoshop and we can do the composite. Okay, so let's open up the files. Let me just close this. Okay, I have to find out where is this file located. It is at E drive, okay.
Okay, let's go to the render images. So now I got these two images, the shaded and the wireframe. Let me open both of them at the same time. So because they are at because they are rendered from the same camera at the lock position, right now I can just copy this image, control A to select the wireframe image, control C to copy, then go over to the shaded version and then go and press control V to paste over as a layer. But for this image here, okay, we can apply a multiply okay but if we apply a multiply we might not be able to see the the whole thing let me find where's the multiply uh, there you go okay so we need to invert this image all right so we need to invert this layer so select the black and uh, white wireframe so go and invert it okay and then you can see now the wireframes are nicely composited over the shaded version Okay, and once you're happy with this, you can save this again as an image. Save as, okay, whatever image you wanted. And then you're done. Okay, so let's take a look at the final image. Okay, so you can see the quality is very good. Right, so if you happen to animate the car turning around for turntables, you can use the same technique, right, to render the wireframes to composite on top of it. And you can see the quality of the wireframe is actually not too bad. And the rendering of the wireframe is very fast. It's like I said, just like that, split second, because it's hardware rendering. Okay, so that's how you do your wireframe on shaded.